ex work, you want to see every girl in bed in suit and dark shades. Hey, you mean, man? We play girls like Getter. Get I be that good fella. Shades over my eye and eye. No personal. If she give me a little ride. My name is Nicola Williams and I'm president of the Cambridge Carnival. I am so pleased to see you all today and thank you for joining us for our 27th Cambridge Carnival International. You know, the show must go on. We are so pleased that you're here with us today. We have a fabulous program, amazing artists, wonderful um, showcases today that we have for you, some live rhythms, um, history, culture, community. That's what Cambridge Carnival is about. And we are so blessed to have you here with us. And thank you so much for all your support. Cambridge Carnival has started as a street fair back in 1993. And today we are one of the largest festivals in Cambridge reaching thousands and thousands of people. We started with a committee of dedicated business owners, community members, and people who just love Carnival. And I'm so pleased that there's many of them are still with us today. Some have passed on, but we love all of the work and appreciate and value all that they have done to make our carnival what it is today. And I know you love Cambridge Carnival. Everybody loves Cambridge Carnival. So we are so pleased that you're with us today. 
We have our Mayor Sumble Siddiqui is going to join us today. We're going to be having uh, Pastor Green from Uni Union Baptist Church is going to bless us. Um, we also have Sheba, who's also going to share a blessing. Our city manager, Louis Despasquale, is going to be here with us uh, today as well. City Councilors E. Diddy Simmons and... Also, City Council Quinton Zondervan is going to share a few words of support. I just want to show my appreciation and how grateful I am for the entire Cambridge Carnival Committee who works year-round to make this wonderful event. I appreciate the band leaders. I appreciate our volunteers. Uh, we appreciate the city support. And so, and we appreciate all of you because you've been here with us since the beginning. And many of you grew up with Carnival. So, you know, something that we look forward to every year. So on this day, Sunday, September 13th, 2020, we had to have a Cambridge Carnival. Yes, we are in a pandemic. Yes, we're going through a lot. I know we're going through a lot, but you know what? We're here for you and we are community and we need to stick together and through, we need to celebrate who we are. We can't let the pandemic keep us down. We have to embrace each other. We have to love each other and we have to build upon what the beauty and culture that we have to share. So I am so pleased, so pleased um, that you're with us today. If you'd like to learn more about Cambridge Carnival, join our committee, join our organization, volunteer, participate in our steel pan program, just go to our website, www.cambridgecarnival.org, and we will welcome you. Cambridge Carnival is about for the people, by the people, we embrace everyone. It's an international carnival based on, of course, the Caribbean and Brazilian cultures. Um, but that's our model. But we are one out of many, many uh, diverse cultures in Cambridge. And that includes you and you and you. So thank you. Br bring a cold, nice iced tea drink and join us or sorrow or fruit punch or pineapple juice and start a watch party because we've got three hours of amazing, amazing time. Wonderful, fantastic, fabulous, incredulous uh, time. I want to um, acknowledge um, our the person in Cambridge who helped to start the carnival, um, which gave us seed money and support, uh, Honorable former Mayor Kenneth E. Reeves. I just want to acknowledge and appreciate him. I also wanted to share a few things, you know, this is about history and culture. So we have some vintage posters. Um, I don't know if you've seen them, but some of these are my favorites. This one is from 2002. This one has Majestical Force in here. These ladies over here um, with the late Pam Curtis, that group uh, from North Cambridge. And all these photos are actual carnival, carnival photos. Our photographers um, have been generous over the years. We also have another one. And another one another one of my favorite. So I just wanted to share some history with you. You're going to get a lot of that today. Um, but I just want to thank again, um, everyone for putting this together. It was challenging, but you know what? We're going to get through this and with all of you and thank you. Thank you so much for your support over the years. Um, and feel free to support us. We, we, we need your support. Um, we need you to come out, but we also need your support. So thank again, our volunteers, our vendors, our wonderful committee, our staff, our program partners uh, like Tempo International, our founders, um, everybody, our committee, our band leaders, all of you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of, of our heart. And let the show begin. Thank you.
Hello, my name is Pastor Jerron Green, and I am the happy pastor of the historic Union Baptist Church in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Here I am in my Cambridge Carnival t-shirt today because I am excited about what Carnival means to the community, to the community of Cambridge and beyond. The Cambridge Carnival is a colorful, festive celebration of African traditions and Caribbean culture. Carnival is a celebration of Black life from the islands and all around the world. And in case you needed a reminder, Black is beautiful. Black is creative. Black is ingenious. Black is rhythmic. Black is free. Black is me. Black is we. And we matter. The Cambridge Carnival is an essential part of the experience of Cambridge. It's planned for the community, by the community. And the city of Cambridge needs to be reminded that Cambridge is diverse and rich, not just because of developers, but because of the amazing culture within her borders. In one city are many nations, Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica and Montserrat, Antigua and Barbados, the Bahamas and Grenada, St. Kitts and St. Lucia, and even my family's island is included too, of Bermuda. Yeah, we're in there too. Cambridge cannot ever forget what makes the experience of the city what it is. So we need more of this, more collaboration, more dialogue, open forums, fruitful discussion, police and elected government, preachers and parishioners. Let's all come together and make Cambridge second to none and first to all. We need carnival. So enjoy Cambridge Carnival today. Be safe and be healthy. It's Pastor Jerron Green. May God bless each and every one of you, my father's children. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's great to be here. Good afternoon, Cambridge and everyone. Uh, I'm Mary Sambosniki, and I'm so glad to be able to welcome you to this year's uh, virtual Cambridge uh, Carnival. Every year, uh, I look forward to Carnival. I look forward to the community it builds, the tradition it shares uh, and teaches, and the colorful, musical, and festive nature of the day. And I know so many of you have attended or looked forward to Carnival each year over the past 20 plus years. And despite needing to celebrate ritually this year, I'm so glad uh, we can celebrate today. Uh, and that's a true testament and statement of the love and joy this Cambridge Carnival brings to our community every year. So I'm looking forward to seeing the performances from Puerto Rican Baba dancer and percussionist Lady Enchantress to all the vintage footage of uh, Carnival's past and uh, present. Uh, and I can't believe it's been going on since 1993. Uh, so I've already loved uh, the pictures you showed, uh, uh, Nicola. And I'm looking forward to the face painting uh, with Angela Owens and so much more. Uh, you have a great day uh, and afternoon planned uh, ahead uh, for everyone. And I know that we can make sure that today is still a day full of history uh, and celebration. So I look forward to experiencing uh, it all with you. And I want to really thank the community members who have come together year after year uh, to plan, preserve, and promote the history of the Caribbean and carnival traditions, especially you, Nicola Williams. Uh, you've put your heart and soul into creating a diverse and beautiful event uh, each year, uh, and Cambridge is a better community because of it. Good afternoon. I am so pleased to be able to join you for the 2020 Virtual Cambridge Carnival, and I want to commend the organizing committee on ensuring that we could come together as a community to celebrate even while in the middle of a pandemic. Since becoming city manager, I have attended every Caribbean Carnival and is one of the most significant cultural celebrations that occur in our city. For almost three decades, Cambridge Carnival has provided a venue for the community to celebrate the Afro-Caribbean cultures, and I look forward to the time when we can once again conduct this colorful event in person. And I still remember in February the wonderful food and atmosphere that was created during the Taste of Carnival earlier this year, just before the pandemic hit our area, and how much I miss the delicious food we could all be enjoying today. I want to thank Nicola Williams for inviting me to speak, and I want to thank 
her for the incredible work that she does every day to support the community in organizing an event like today. I also am pleased that the City of Cambridge works closely and collaboratively with Nicole to provide support in many ways for this annual celebration. I know you will all enjoy today's virtual celebration, and I am looking forward to today's events, especially with this amazing schedule that they have put together. Thank you and enjoy the event. Hi there. My name is Owen Howell. I'm a member of the Cambridge Carnival Committee. Welcome to our Carnival 2020. I have a little poem here that I wrote concerning George Floyd and all the protests that have been happening. I'm not sure if you or any of you are aware, but um, the day that George Floyd was killed by the cop was the same day that a rocket was launched into into space. I'm not sure if it was a test if, if it was Tesla or but it was a rocket. SpaceX, it was a rocket that was launched and I wrote a poem thinking of how far we have come and how much further we have to go. So here's the poem. Erase the space and no space for a race. Maybe our race should be headed to space. What goes up must come down. While many looked up a man went down. Minneapolis, a city so vast, diminishing a space so small. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. That minute space, the minimum space so small but necessary for life. While many looked up, a man went down. On one knee, not to pray, not to propose, but to close that small space of a man's life. Social distance is the new name for racism. Stay away, give me space. It has been practiced for years, for race, not space. Who knew it would be so easy? A rocket goes up, a man goes down. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Um, we have many entertainers coming up, so please enjoy your time and um, thank you for supporting the Cambridge Carnival. Uh, my name is Owen Howell and I hope to see you next year at the Carnival. Thank you. Make space. So up next, we'll be having uh, Angela Owens, um, our face painter, and um, you know, you know her. She's at Carnival every year, um, so we look forward to seeing her in the kids' uh, fest area, uh, which is organized by Drusilla um, on on our Carnival committee, Drusilla Edwards. And we just want to appreciate Angela uh, for showing up every year to support us and enjoy this face painting demonstration from Angela Owens. You're up, Nomadic. Kids Corner at the Cambridge Carnival. This is Addie, my model. Addie, say hi. Hi. Today we're going to work on a really quick, super quick carnival flower crown. Are you ready? Yep. All right. So we're going to get started with the first layer of colors. And I'm going to just do a nice swoop on our forehead here. And then another one here and another one here. Good job, Addie. I'm gonna also load that same brush back up one more time. And just go around her eye. Like that. Now we're gonna go in here and just close your eyes and just relax. Add a flower to her crown. And 
and again on her cheek. On this cheek. And then we're gonna add some flower petals going up to the top of the crown. Beautiful. I'm gonna load up a brush with some white paint. This is where we get a little bit more creative. Just look down, please. That's nice. Light teardrops. Around the flower. On both sides. How are you doing? Good. You're doing wonderful, thank you. I like this blue. You like that color? Mm-hmm. Let me just add some thoughts. Let me just add some thoughts. Anything blue? Okay, good to know. I will add some blue. Some dots. Can you look my way for a minute? Oh, good job. Yeah, my faces stick together. And let's add some white dots to the center of the flower. And because Addie asked for some blue, we're going to add some blue dots. Oh, yeah, you just made light blue. Yep. Also gonna add some blue dots to the main flower and the forehead, temple. And while we're at it, we'll add some blue and on the other side. Good job. Now I'm gonna add a lip color. What color would you like on your lips? You want that blue? Mm-hmm. So this is just like lipstick. Yep. I'm gonna call it. Wait, 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 wait. How would it look if blue and purple with on my lips? I can add both. Hmm. So let's do a little bit of blue up here. On the top. Close your mouth. And we're not rubbing because it's not real lipstick. It's just paint. Okay, I'm going to clean that off. I'm going to add the purple that you asked for. Like that. Am I adding my purple? Good job. So. I hate pink. My mom loves it. She says she always buys pink clothes for me. Like, put some pink on you. <sighs> Close your eyes. Nope, it's just a, it's a primer gel. Would it hurt if I get in your eye? Um, if you get some pieces in your eye, the best thing to do would just be to wash it out. Close your eyes. Okay. But if you wipe away from your eyes, it will not get into your eyes. One little more, a little bit more. There we go. Let's add some purple. Open. Ooh, so pretty. All right, guys, look in the mirror. I know you don't know what you look like now, but let me just give you the, can the little mirror. And let's see. I love it. You love it? It looks kind of just like a picture. Awesome. All right, look over here. Let's say thank you to everybody for watching. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful rest of the fall season. Enjoy carnival, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Right. We out. <laughs> we out. <laughs>
I love it too. This is amazing. Thank you, Angela. That was amazing. I love it. So next up, we have our some community partners um, that will be doing a PSA. And um, we support community partners every year. So join us. Happy Cambridge Carnival. My name is Emily and I'm here today from Big Sister Boston. And I'm here to tell you about our volunteer opportunities. Big Sister is a gender intentional mentorship program that matches adult bigs with littles between the ages of seven and 15. Our mission is to ignite girls' passion and power to succeed through positive mentoring relationships with women and enrichment programs that support girls' healthy development. Ultimately, our vision is to create a mentor-rich community in which every girl has access to the individual nurturing, guidance, and support she needs to become a confident, competent, and caring adult. We do that through our mentorship programs. During these times, like everyone else, we have pivoted to continue to provide that support in the current world. You're able to apply to be a big sister in our community-based program and be matched while we are still social distancing. In pre-COVID times, the community-based mentoring relationship would have looked like going on outings together on the weekends, and we do plan to return to our focus on in-person, face-to-face connection when we are able to safely do so. Currently, you can go through your full application process remotely and even start meeting with your little over video chat. We also have opportunities to be involved in other ways. You can help with fundraising by taking part in this year's virtual Rodman Ride for Kids on September 26th, or attend our virtual celebration, Big in Boston, on September 30th. Tickets to the celebration are free this year, and it will be a fun night that amplifies the voices of our little sisters and shines a light on why girls, why Big Sister Boston, and why now. You can learn more about these opportunities and more by going to our website, bigsister.org. Thank you. Hi, all. I'm Neffen Meister. Did you know that the city of Cambridge has an LGBTQ plus commission? Well, we do, and we on the commission are here for you. The Cambridge LGBTQ plus commission is really excited to participate in this first ever virtual Cambridge Carnival. What do we do as a commission? Well, anything we can think of to make Cambridge a better, safer place for queer folks. We work with elders and youth. We make sure that city services and other services in Cambridge are supportive of our LGBTQ plus residents. We work with the police and fire departments to educate them and keep them on their toes. And of course, we work with the mayor, the city council, the city manager, and other commissions on policy issues and events. So whether you or a friend or a family member is LGBTQ+, an ally, or unsure about where you fit in the broader spectrum of things, the LGBTQ Commission is here for you. We advocate for a culture of respect. We monitor progress towards equality for all persons with regards to sexual orientation and gender identity and expression. Again, we're very excited to participate in this first ever virtual Cambridge Carnival. We hope y'all have a safe, healthy, and fun time. Great. Thank you very much. Um, so up next, we'll be having Lady Enchant L. Lady Pabon, um, a.k.a. Lady Enchantress. We're really looking forward to having her, and um, I'm excited. Um, to, to see her drumming and listen to it and rumble with it. So I hope you are too. So. First and foremost, I'd like to give thanks to and honor the Nipmuc people of the land, which I currently reside on whose stories tend to be overlooked, not acknowledged, and just not known by so many. This is a bomba drum. It's called a bahil. And the bahiles are unique to the island of Boriquen, which today is known as Puerto Rico. And 
The Bahilas were created by my ancestors who were enslaved and brought over to the Caribbean and uh, to Borican. Um, but Spanish colonizers in 15th, 16th century, starting then. And um, they created these drums um, as a way of connecting to the motherland. They used natural resources on the island. And when I play the drum, play the body, when I hear it or when I dance to it, um, it is a way that I connect to Borken and to our unique and complex history, the unique and complex history of my people. So I won't be playing bomba in its traditional form today. Um, what I'll be doing is kind of like modernizing remix, giving honor to Borikin, to the Caribbean. Adjust my camera here because for some reason you're not gonna be able to see. Please. Hi guys. Este, okay, so while I do this, I'm gonna tell you one thing. Cuba. So in Cuba, um, many, 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 many say that uh, Cubans and Puerto Ricans are like cousins. Right? And so I've been to Cuba a lot and I've learned a lot from their dances. And one thing is for sure, their salsa, their timba, um, is, is um, well, the dancers, they infuse orishas. So orishas are connections to nature. And so therefore, you're going to see that in this dance. And, um, this dance I'm doing for them because, unfortunately, um, 
our Cuban brothers and sisters on the islands are not able to connect with us as easily as we can with each other here. And we've, we've had to stop any, um, any programs or any uh, travel to the island, which my, um, the dance company I'm part of, the Artist Collective Meta Movements, uh, what we do is we design these trips to bring people there to learn um, from the Cubans themselves about their culture, their dances, their music, their history, their true history. And so therefore, you know, because we can't literally do that right now, what we're doing is we're supporting them through creating an online virtual school. And so at this virtual school on metamovements.com, what we've done is that um, we learn from the artists and um, we're able to kind of have anyone learn from them too. And so this dance is in honor of them and you will see some salsa movements, but mostly you'll see some Orisha movements. And it's, um, some people may say it's religious, obviously, but to me it's more spiritual and um, it's definitely connecting to the earth. A lot of the movements you'll see, you might recognize. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that now.
One day, an ant was walking down the road and he came and saw this huge breadcrumb with guava jelly. Mmm. Ants love guava jelly. So he decided he would take this breadcrumb home to feed his family. He got behind the breadcrumb and he started to push. He pushed and he pushed and he pushed and he couldn't move the breadcrumb. So he sat down on the road next to the breadcrumb to try and think about how to get it home to feed his family. Well, as he sat there, down the road came a bee. Now this bee had just been in the field over yonder and was loaded down, laden with pollen on his way to his hive. He was flying low and slow. <laughs> The ant stopped the bee and said, excuse me, can you please help me move my breadcrumb? You see, I'm too small. I can't move it by myself. The bee thought about it. And then he said, no, I have to get my pollen back to my hive and flew away. Well, the ant felt bad, but he was far more concerned with getting this breadcrumb home to feed his family. And he continued to sit there and think about it. Down the road came a butterfly with beautiful wings, and she knew it too. <laughs> This was a butterfly with an attitude. She flew very slowly so that everyone could see her beautiful wings and she flew over to the ant and the ant said, excuse me, can you please help me move my breadcrumb? You see, I'm too small. I can't move it by myself. Butterfly thought about it. Hmm. Then she said, no, I might get my wings dirty. And I am much too beautiful to get my wings dirty. And then flew on down. The ant felt very bad. You see that whenever anyone asked for his help, he was always there for them. And it seemed like nobody wanted to help him. What to do, what to do. Down the road came a beetle, a trickster beetle. This beetle loved to play practical jokes on all the other animals. This beetle giggled when he walked. <laughs> and the ant stopped the beetle and he said, excuse me, can you please help me move my breadcrumb? You see, I'm too small. I can't move it by myself. The beetle thought about it. <laughs> and he 
and then he said, sure, I'll help you. He went around the breadcrumb and he bent down and he took a big bite. Boom! I helped you, he said. I helped you by making your breadcrumb smaller. <laughs> I went on down the road. The aunt was very, very sad. What? Way up in a tree, watching all of this was a spider, a grandmother's spider. She had watched the ant say, I can't do this, I can't do that. She decided she was gonna do something about it. So she spun a web down, 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 down from the tree and over to the ant. And the ant said to grandmother spider, excuse me, can you please help me move my breadcrumb? You see, I'm too small. I can't move it by myself. Grandmother Spider said, I'll help you. I'll help you by weaving the web around that breadcrumb and taking it back to my family. And that's what she started to do. She started to weave a web around and around and around the breadcrumb. And the ant jumped up and he said, no, that's my breadcrumb. And he got behind the breadcrumb and he started to push. He pushed and he pushed and he pushed and he pushed. <gasps> Before he knew it, he had pushed that breadcrumb all the way to his ant hill. He looked at Grandmother Spider, well, Grandmother Spider looked at him and she said, see, I knew you could do it. You can do anything you set your mind to. And the ant thought about what Grandmother Spider said and then he said, <laughs> Thank you. And that night, the ant and all his family had a wonderful dinner of breadcrumb and guava jelly. Mm -mm. Ants love guava jelly. Banga alafia, ashe, ashe. Banga alafia. Ashe, Ashe, in English, welcome and peace to you. Amen, amen. Welcome and peace to you. Amen, amen. Thank you. And thank you for having me. Goodbye. My name is Quissy Pla with Comfort Kitchen. And today we're gonna make a very simple but extremely flavorful jerk marinade. Um, we have some ingredients out here, but first I wanna talk about Comfort Kitchen a little bit. Comfort Kitchen is a restaurant coming to Upham's Corner in 2021, spring of 2021. We're gonna be highlighting some um, Afro, diaspora, uh, Afro diaspora food and just really taking a journey through the diaspora all the way to Southeast Asia, all around the world, really. We want to explore global comfort. So today we're making a jerk marinade. It's a very simple recipe. It's something that's done in a snap. And even though the, if we have a lot of ingredients, you could really throw everything together and just blend it to make a bit of a paste, if you would. Um, for this recipe, we have some um, white onions. You need about two medium-sized white onions and about three tablespoons of ginger, which all is mixed in here, and maybe then about three cloves of garlic, right? In here I have um, equal parts orange juice and lime juice, and it's about a quarter cup's worth. And in here there's four scotch bonnet peppers. Um, we have about a tablespoon of thyme, and 
a teaspoon of sugar, a tablespoon of salt, and a teaspoon each of car um, nutmeg and cinnamon. And here, so the recipe calls for soy, but I like um, coconut aminos because you can get the same flavors as soy without the extra sodium and uh, gluten. So I like to use uh, coconut aminos for this particular recipe. Well, I generally like to use it. Also, the recipe calls for white vinegar, but I prefer cider vinegar just because it's not as sharp as white vinegar. And you know, the kind of tang that the orange juice is going to provide, the apple cider vinegar balances out a little bit. So, like I said, this recipe is very simple. All, all we, we're doing is combining all these ingredients and pulsing them in the food processor so they make a nice little paste. And then we're going to toss our protein into it. First thing we're going to do is do all our dry ingredients. So onions, garlic, ginger. I'm gonna go right in. Okay. It's going everywhere. Okay. So onion, garlic, and ginger is in. Scotch bonnets are going in. And then all the dry spices, including the sugar, are gonna go in. Okay. Fresh thyme. So one thing to note is that with the garlic and the ginger and the thyme you could do powdered and dry i prefer to use the fresh because i feel like the, the flavor the flavor profiles stand out a little more and then we're gonna add our lime juice and orange juice just a touch there cider vinegar you always want to add your dry ingredients first, just so in case you have to make any adjustments, you can go back before everything is all mixed together. We're going to go with the coconut aminos here. And then a little bit of olive oil. You don't want too much liquid. Also, you just want it to be enough where when you blend it, you get a nice paste texture, right? And we're all in. Now all we have to do is just blend this, and we're gonna apply it to our protein. In this case, we're doing um, some chicken wings with this jerk marinade, and we'll be good to go. So we have a puree here with all the ingredients, and we're gonna add it to, like I said, whatever protein you really choose, but in this case, we have some chicken wings and thighs. So we're just going to add it over. And normally, for me, I like to let this sit for 24 hours, but really a couple of hours will do fine. And now, you know, Pippa and I are going to put this meat on the grill and go to town. Uh, but we're excited to be here. Quaz has got great chicken recipe. Um, you know, one of the things that was exciting about participating in this is that, you know, for for us, we're doing a global comfort food concept. And one of the biggest things about jerk is that, you know, if you, anywhere within the Caribbean, you will find jerk. Whatever protein it, it is, it can be jerked. And jerk very similarly re resemble, resembles um, curry from India or suya from west africa and it, it very much embodies the concept that we're trying to pursue so we again we were extremely excited to be able to participate in this so we're gonna go ahead and get some of this chicken on the grill so we're gonna add a little bit of hickory chips to so use a little bit of smoked flavor You know, for a lot of grilling purposes, a lot of people like to drain their marinade so much that the meat is dry when it gets to the grill. In this case, you don't want that because you want the 
the marinade to really stick to the meat. And because of the oil and the fat that's in the marinade, it's going to kind of correct itself, if you will. Mm -hmm. Instead of sticking too much to the grill or dropping into, like I said, you want to have a paste-like consistency. And with that paste-like consistency, you won't really have a problem with the oil dripping into the fire and dousing the fire out. So as you can see, we're literally going right from bowl to grill, and it's perfectly fine. I also sometimes like to save a little bit of the marinade and put it aside, not with the raw meat, but just a tiny bit to brush the protein once it's cooked. And you want to cook this at a 350-degree Fahrenheit, and... Within 10, at the very latest, 15 minutes, you have perfectly cooked jerk wings. Again, thanks for having us. Yes. And we hope to see you all in Tupper Kitchen soon. Yes. Happy Carnival. This is City Councilor Denise Simmons reaching out to you saying Happy Carnival. You know, it's really unfortunate we're not going to be able to get together this year. I'm very happy that Nicola Williams and her group of volunteers are putting together this virtual opportunity so that we can continue to celebrate our Caribbean heritage. You know, Nicola's been doing this for over two decades. It is the largest cultural event that we have in the city of Cambridge. And I'm just happy that we can get together, even if it means virtually. So I know we won't be able to get together and hear the music live and eat all that extraordinary food and see all that wonderful costuming and dancing. But maybe next year. So listen, turn turn on the set, enjoy the virtual cultural celebration, and I look forward to seeing you next year. Happy Carnival. The ground is moving under my feet The earth is bursting at the seams Waves crashing in, waves crashing in Rivers are rising, flowing high and prophets sing the end is nigh. Waves crashing in, waves crashing in. So stay close and brace yourself, child. It's, it's gonna be a bumpy ride. The words I fumbled fell to the floor And I don't believe them anymore Waves crashing in, waves crashing in My skin is burning under your view the lies I spun are seeping through. Waves crashing in, waves crashing in. So stay close and brace yourself, child. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. So stay close and brace yourself, child. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. My body is shaking, but make no mistake. The tremble made the earth quake. Waves crashing in, waves crashing in. Despite ill times. 
I won't despair. My soul will find a listener. Waves crashing in, waves crashing in. So stay close and brace yourself, child. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. So stay close and brace yourself, child. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. A 
barrel will crash all the way or in the end where it got sent take that barrel down and roll it down down the hill down until a barrel will crash all the way where it got sent Barrel and tear, roll it down, down the hill, down the tear, barrel will crash. As the air clears from shots fired at black lives by petty men with bitter wives, whispered words cut like knives. Why? Only whispers from those who lose nothing, risk nothing, do nothing, love nothing. Don't you know that we are dying? We can't breathe and we have been trying to catch our damn breath for 500 years. So let the winds of change blow. Let the smoke clear from shots fired at black lives. We call on Oya, ruler of the tempest, bringer of lightning, bring the storm, fill our batteries, stop the stagnant cesspools, rip the roof off their privilege, shake the ground and let no taker of life walk good and sure-footed over the necks of our children. Blow, blow and fill our lungs because we will breathe, we shall take breath, and we shall not scream at deaf ears but laugh. <laughs> laugh with our lovers and soothe their souls from fears and let our children know that the future and the air is theirs. We shall breathe. We shall take breath. Hi, Lynette. Hi, Nicola. I'm here finally. Glad to have you here. Um, welcome to virtual Cambridge Carnival. Um, so far, we've been having a wonderful time. Yeah, I, I like what I've been seeing. <laughs> yeah. I could hear. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm not going to keep everyone out because I'm excited to hear from Lynette Laveau, a Cambridge resident one of our founding members of the Cambridge Carnival, and uh, she will do her thing. We're glad to have you, Lynette. Okay, welcome to the first virtual Cambridge Caribbean Carnival on its 27th anniversary. Woohoo! I'm Lynette Laveau, visionary arts entrepreneur, and in 1992, visualizing, conceptualizing, and manifesting the first carnival in Cambridge was no simple feat. Starting with three arts entrepreneurs, myself included, we came together with one great idea. Cambridge needed its own Caribbean carnival. We had no capital, but lots of passion, determination, faith, and a network of supporters. When nothing exists, everything is possible. We networked and multiplied into a planning committee of nine dynamic people, and together we set out to launch the first Caribbean Carnival for to launch for August 1993. After a lot of toil, frustration, and struggles at fundraising, we breathed life into this moving theater of the street. With the valuable help of the Cambridge mayor, Ken Reeves, and his city officials, we co collaborated with like-minded artists and gener generous sponsors who caught the vision as we enthusiastically 
collaborated like midwives to carefully birth and deliver this gift to Cambridge, a gift that keeps on giving from the Caribbean diaspora of Cambridge and Boston, where many ancestors from the Caribbean have lived in Cambridge since 1750. My heartfelt appreciation and thanks goes to each and every committee member, current, past, every volunteer, every supporter, and our dear Brazilian brother, Ije Passos, may he rest in peace, who galvanized the Brazilian community and made the outcome even more rewarding. And those special Boston Carnival Band leader organizers who for every year since 1993, along with the wonderful vendors of craft and delicious food and talented artists who have worked tirelessly with the current dedicated committee of nine, along with the support of the mayor and city officials to continue to assist in keeping the Cambridge Caribbean Carnival International alive. It is carnival by the people, for the people. Now the roots of all carnivals are in the celebration of formerly enslaved Africans in the Caribbean, remembering Emancipation Day, August 1, 1834. The only living memorial that honors those brave ancestors from those dark years of slavery is carnival. The costume pageants are the living art of the carnival, started as a brave exercise of working off the hatred and resentment of the slave master's brutality by mocking him and his kin, using parody and mimicry through contrived costumes and song known as Calypso, which grew in the ensuing 186 years. The freed African slaves did not invent carnival, but adopted it from the slave master as they had witnessed the grand courtly pre-Lenten European balls, known as carnivals, with ornate costumes, masks, and bacchanalia, which lasted throughout the night, while the slaves were exhausted from grueling toil in the sugar plantations. The freed slaves revived their ancient African customs of pageantry, celebrations, rituals, and ceremonial dress for celebration, resulting in displays of elaborate costume depictions, rich in detail and artistry, accompanied by fetes, music, and nonstop partying. Carnival allows participants to express themselves freely, reuniting annually on a safe communal level in a festive atmosphere, which while honoring ancestral roots and a history that binds us together, does not include guns, violence, or lewdness. It is about the freedom of expression, and community celebration of values of freedom, joy, diversity in the city of Cambridge that reflects and accepts these values. We say a mighty thank you to the mayor of Cambridge and city councillors and city officials who ensure that we are able to continue on in the coming years. Happy Cambridge Caribbean Carnival to all of you. Greetings from Toronto to the Cambridge Caribbean Carnival International. This is the reigning Canadian Calypso monarch, Joel Davis, AKA Connector. I wanna congratulate you on your first ever virtual showcase 2020. And it's a pleasure to perform for you all.
My name is Quentin Zondervan, Cambridge City Councilor, and I'm originally from the Caribbean, uh, from Suriname, which is on the mainland of South America. And as you may know, last year I was part of the effort to make sure that the carnival would continue in Cambridge. And of course, we are a little bit sad that we can't celebrate in person this year, but I'm still glad to be here with you all and enjoying this great virtual uh, carnival in Cambridge. So thank you all for celebrating with us and for appreciating Caribbean culture. And I look forward to celebrating with you all in person next year. Thank you so much, enjoy. Good evening, everyone. My name is Marcia. The first Anansi story is about um, wisdom. Now, many years ago, wisdom was not scattered like it is these days. And so Anansi thought he could gather all the wisdom on the earth, put it in a pot, and hide it on a hill where he alone could reach it. So he gathered all the wisdom, left home early one morning, but he didn't know that his little son went out before him, and the son followed him. Now, when he got to the hill, and through the forest, he was wanted to climb the tree to hide the pot up in the tree. He couldn't climb with the pot. He tried several times and he failed. And after several times, the son was watching him. He said, father, father, if you put the pot on your back, you'll be able to climb with the pot. And so Anansi did that and saw it was easy. Now, of course, he was totally annoyed because his son outwitted him. So when he got all the way up there in the tree with the pot, he threw it down. And the people in the village heard, and of course they all ran to collect as much wisdom as they can. The ones who got there first, got as much wisdom collected as much as they could. So that's why there are people who have more wisdom than others, okay? The second one is about the lost tail. Now, there lived a king named Nana Nakompong. Nana Nakompong lost his magic tail. So he gathered all the people in the world, on, in the village, to um, find the tail. And he was going to give them a reward, which was his beautiful daughter. So, of course, when Anansi heard this, Anansi is like, yep, I am going to get her as my bride. So he went out looking and he found a lion steel. And right away he ran back to Nana Nakompong and said, I found your magic tail. Now, he didn't and he was all happy and Nana Nakompong said, you know, gathered all the people again because he was gonna do a big award ceremony and give Anansi his daughter. Well, that's what Anansi thought. But little did he know that Nana Na Kong Kong knew that he was trying to deceive him. So when he gathered all the people in the village and ready for the celebration, Nana Na Kong Kong said, Anansi, you tried to deceive me. All you strong men, come out here because we are gonna give Anansi a lashing. And when Anansi heard that, he jumped up and he saw a web up in the corner of the house and he jump up there. And that's why to this very day, you see a spider web in the corner of any home. Thank you very much. Hello again, welcome to Cambridge Carnival. 
and this is part two of my contribution. I am Marcia Farron. My um, Anansi story is entitled, It's Good to Be Good. Many, many years ago in a small village, there lived a man. He was homeless and he was a beggar. So he would beg people all the time. But whenever he begged anyone anything and they gave him something, he would say, thank you, the good you do, you do to yourself. So anyway, when he got food, what he would do, he became very popular among the children. He would share it with the children. So the kids absolutely loved him. But there was one particular man Anansi that didn't like a bone in this man for some reason or another and he disliked the man so much that he decided he was gonna poison the man so one day he bought a bread he poisoned the bread and he saw the beggar man come in he came out and he said hi I have something for you and so the beggar man kind of knew, you know, that, you know, this man didn't like him. He took the bread from him and he told him, if you do bad, you do it to yourself. Not his normal response. So the man took the bread, but he wasn't hungry. He didn't eat the bread. The kids saw him as usual and they ran to him and these particular three kids that he saw playing and he gave them the bread he gave them the bread they ate the bread and right after they ate the bread blah, blah, they started vomiting and vomiting and they were rushed to the hospital when they took them to the hospital they died one after the other but before they died they told the doctor that it was the beggar man that gave them the bread and right after they gave them the bread that's when they got sick so now the doctor had to report it and when the doctor reported it they went and arrested the beggar man and he had to tell them where he got the bread so they brought in the father of the three kids because he was the father of the three kids and when he went to court he couldn't he was speechless because he was the one that actually poisoned his kids so the moral of the story is if you do good you do it for yourself never try to do bad to anyone because you might end up falling in your own trap it's me again and i'm reading you a story of abina and the bird from Anansi volume two. Abina was the most beautiful girl in her country. She was so beautiful since her infancy, all the men in her country, the kings, the chief, the princes, and other personalities gave them their heart. But Abina turned them down without exception. She wanted to marry a complete stranger. Her dreams were met one day. A stranger, young, beautiful, handsome, and rich man presented himself. Abina fell in love with him. Despite the objection of her parents, she married him and after a few days, she left with him to his country. Mad in love, Abina forgot about her parents. She did not think any longer of her brothers and her sisters. Her country, her neighbors were all forgotten. 10 years passed and Abina did not pay them a visit. She was happy with her husband without thinking of paying a visit to her country and her parents. Her parents did not search for her because they didn't know where to find her. 15 years passed, Abina still did not visit them. Her parents died one after the other. Her grandmother was the first to die, then her mother, and then her father. Abina didn't know anything. Then one day, a bird 
came and perched at the top of the roof of her husband's hut and started to sing. Abina, her mother is dead, her father is dead, her grandmother is dead, but she has not heard. The drums were beating, totom, totom. The sound of the gunshots explode, pow, pow. Women were crying, yo, yo. But she hasn't heard. Abina, her mother is dead, her father is dead, her grandmother is dead, but she hasn't heard. Upon hearing this song, Abina remained silent for some time with her mouth open. <gasps> what does this mean? She asked herself. She could not believe her ears. She ran straight to her husband to tell him what had come to hear. Her husband could not understand either. Wait, he said, I am going to call the hare. He understands the language of the birds. The husband returned instantly with the hare. At the same time, the bird started to sing. Abina, her mother is dead. Her father is dead. Her grandmother is dead, but she hasn't heard. Abina, her mother is dead. Her father is dead. Her grandmother is dead, but she hasn't heard. Immediately, the bird finished singing. The hear shook his head and declared, Unfortunate. It's a sad news, madame, a very bad news for you. The bird says your mother, your father, your grandmother are all dead. Good gracious, Abina shouted after hearing the news. She threw herself to the ground and started to cry. It was a pity to see her rolling on the ground completely covered with dust. After she calmed down, she started her preparations obtained permission from her husband and left for her native country. But what of use? Having left her country so young, she did not even know where to find her town, let alone their house. So this is why children who leave their countries for overseas are always advised to pay periodic visits to their parents. Thank you. That's the end of the story. So now that you are um, at the carnival and at the carnival, there's always a lot of food. I would suggest that you go get something to eat. Thank you very much and have a wonderful time.
Greetings all. My name is Manuel Flor. I am of Caribbean descent, first generation born here in this country. My parents are Puerto Rican and Cuban. I only have my PR flag tonight, today, right now. I have um, the honor of echoing a masterpiece today. I will be reading New Eureka Movement and New Eureka Poet Cafe co-founders, Pedro Petri's 1968 masterpiece, Puerto Rican obituary. They worked. They were always on time. They were never late. They never spoke back when they were insulted. They worked. They never took days off that were not on the calendar. They never went on strike without permission. They worked 10 days a week and were only paid for five. They worked, they worked, they worked and they died. They died broke, they died owing, they died never knowing what the front entrance of the first national city bank looked like. Juan, Miguel, Milagro, Olga, Manuel, all died yesterday, today, and will die again tomorrow, passing their bill collectors on to the next of kin, 
all died waiting for the Garden of Eden to open up again under a new management. All died dreaming about America, waking them up in the middle of the night, screaming, Mira, Mira, your name is on the winning lottery ticket for $100,000. All died hating the grocery stores that sold them make-believe steak and bulletproof rice and beans. All died waiting dreaming and hating dead Puerto Ricans who never knew they were Puerto Ricans, who never took a coffee break from the Ten Commandments to kill, kill, kill the landlords of their cracked skulls and communicate with their Latino souls. Juan, Miguel, Milagro, Olga, Manuel, from the nervous breakdown street where the mice live like millionaires and the people do not live at all, are dead and were never alive. Juan died waiting for his number to hit. Miguel died waiting for the welfare check to come and go and come again. Milagro died waiting for her 10 children to grow up and work so she could quit working. Olga died waiting for a $5 raise. Manuel died waiting for his supervisor to drop dead so he could get a promotion. It's a long ride from Spanish Harlem to Long Island Cemetery where they were buried. First the train and then the bus and the cold cuts for lunch and the flowers that will be stolen when visiting hours are over. It's very expensive. It's very expensive but they understand, their parents understood. It's a long nonprofit ride from Spanish Harlem to Long Island Cemetery. Juan, Miguel, Milagro, Olga, Manuel, all died yesterday, today, and will die again tomorrow, dreaming, dreaming about queens, Clean cut, lily white neighborhood, Puerto Rican Latin, $30,000 home, the first six on the block, proud to belong to a community of gringos who want them lynched, proud to be a long distance away from the sacred phrase. Que pasa? These dreams, these empty dreams from the make believe bedrooms their parents left them are the after effects of television programs about the ideal white American family with black maids and Latino janitors who are well-trained to make everyone in their bill collectors laugh at them and the people they represent. Juan died dreaming about a new car. Miguel died dreaming about new anti-poverty programs. Miguel died dreaming about a trip to Puerto Rico. Olga died dreaming about real jewelry. Manuel died dreaming about the Irish sweepstakes. They all died, like a hero sandwich dies in the garment district at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Social security number to ashes, union dues to dust. They knew they were born to weep and keep the morticians employed as long as they pledge allegiance to the flag that wants them destroyed. They saw their names listed in the telephone directory of destruction. They were trained to turn the other cheek by newspapers that misspelled, mispronounced, and misunderstood their names and celebrated when death came and stole their final laundry ticket. They were born dead and they died dead. It's time to visit Sister Lopez again, the number one healer and fortune card dealer in Spanish Harlem. She can communicate with your late relatives for a reasonable fee. Good news is guaranteed. Rise table, rise table, death is not dumb and disabled. Those who love you want to know the correct number to play. Let them know this right away. Rise table, rise table, death is not dumb and disabled.
stable now that your problems are over and the world is off your shoulders help those who you left behind find financial peace of mind rise stable rise stable death is not some and disabled if the right number we hit all our work problems will split and we will visit your grave on every legal holiday those who love you want to know the correct number to play let them know this right away we know your spirit is able that is not some and disable rise table rise table one miguel milagro olga manuel all died yesterday today and will die again tomorrow hating fighting and stealing broken windows from each other practicing a religion without a roof the old testament the new testament according to the gospel of the internal revenue the judge and jury and executioner protector and eternal bill collector second hand shit to sale learn how to say como esta usted and you will make a fortune they are dead they are dead and will not return from the dead until they stop neglecting the art of their dialogue for broken English lessons to impress the Mr. Goldstein who keep them employed as lava platos, porters, messenger boys, factory workers, maids, stock clerks, shipping clerks, assistant mailroom assistants, assistant assistant to the assistant assistants, assistant lava platos and automatic artificial smiling doormen for the lowest wages of the ages and rages when you demand a raise because it's against company policies to promote fix. 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 One. Died hating Miguel because Miguel's used car was in better running condition than his used car. Miguel died hating Milagros because Milagros had a color television set and he could not afford one yet. Milagros died hating Olga because Olga made $5 more on the same job. Olga died hating Manuel because Manuel had hit the numbers more times than she had hit the numbers. Manuel died hating all of them. Juan, Miguel, Milagro, and Olga because they all spoke broken English more fluently than he did. And now they are together in the main lobby of the void, addicted to silence off limits to the wind, confined to worm supremacy in Long Island Cemetery. This is the groovy hereafter, the Protestant collection box was talking so proud and loud about here lies Juan, here lies Miguel, here lies Milagro, here lies Olga, here lies Manuel, who died yesterday, today, and will die again tomorrow, always broke, always owing, never knowing they are beautiful people, never knowing the geography of their complexion. Puerto Rico is a beautiful place. Puerto Ricanos are a beautiful race. If only they had turned off the television and tuned into their own imagination. If only they had used the white supremacy Bibles for toilet paper purpose and make the Latino souls the only religion of their race. If only they had returned to the definition of the sun after the first mental snowstorm on the summer of their senses. If only they had kept their eyes open at the funeral of their fellow employees who came to this country to make a fortune and were buried without underwear. Juan, Miguel, Milagro, Olga, Manuel will right now be doing their own thing where beautiful people sing and dance and work together, where the wind is a stranger to miserable weather conditions, where you do not need a dictionary to communicate with your people. Aquí se habla español all the time. Aquí you salute your flag first. Aquí there are no dial soap commercials. Aquí everybody smells good. Aquí TV dinners do not have a future. Aquí the men and women admire, desire, and never get tired of each other. Aquí que pasta power is what's happening. Aquí to be called negrito means to be called love.
Puerto Rican Obituary by Pedro Pérez. Thank you, Luna, the floor. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> thanks for blessing us today. Um, have a lovely rest of your day, and thanks for participating in the carnival. Um, and Nicola says thank you as well. Uh, let's see what's coming up on deck. I think, Jenny, you ready to go? Jenny. <laughs> um, I think... Okay. Hello. Yes, I am ready to go. Oh, you tell All me right, you guys. Know. We are here now. Thank you so much, <laughs> Luna. That was beautiful. Thank you.
Adonis and crew, Mastodonis Project. And uh, it's always a pleasure to have you join us here at Virtual Carnival. Um, coming up next, we are going to show a montage of videos. Oh, we are going to play some videos from overtime from past carnivals. So stay tuned. <laughs> photographic essay book, Culture, People, Places, Trinidad and Tobago. 
Photographer, engineer Michael C. Smith migrated to the USA over 30 years and wanted to rediscover the culture, the people, and the places of this beautiful twin island state. This he captured through careful observation and photography over 5,000 images. Get your copy of Culture, People, Places, Trinidad, and Tobago. Available on Amazon.com, BookBaby.com, BostonCarnivalVillage.com, or WhatsApp at 1617-512-7803. Enjoy the beauty of Trinidad and Tobago with this 240-page photographic essay book, Culture, People, Places, Trinidad and Tobago. Photographer, engineer Michael C. Smith migrated to the USA over 30 years and wanted to rediscover the culture, the people and the places of this beautiful twin island state. This he captured through careful observation and photography in over 5,000 images. Get your copy of Culture, People, Places, Trinidad and Tobago. Available on Amazon.com, BookBaby.com, BostonCarnivalVillage.com or WhatsApp at 1617-512-7803. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hey, good morning. I say good morning. Boy, I drunk already. I mean, good afternoon. My name is Ulrich Johnson. I have my drink because it's Cambridge Carnival. Corona can't stop us. I mean, not we as West Indian. Corona or no Corona. Well, we go drink Corona beer usually, but because of Corona, we ain't drinking Corona beer. Uh, so I just want to welcome you to this year's um, 2020 Virtual Carnival is back now. Um, my name is Aubrey Johnson, Tempo International Rhythm Section and Steel Band. We've been with the Cambridge Carnival uh, since the beginning, the conception of Carnival. You, 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 uh, so far, you see costumes. You see African uh, poetry and spoken word. You see, you see women winding up. But you can't have a carnival without a steel band, right? So that's where tempo come in. And so today I want to give you a little brief history about steel band. Lynette gave a nice history about carnival. But one of the things that she missed to tell you is this djembe, which was used by the African slaves in Trinidad, was used to communicate, was used to, to for ritual practice. But the slave master wanted to take this away. This is music, the djembe. So they take this away from the slaves. But we slaves, we African slaves, we are very inventive people. We have to have music. We have to have a way to communicate to the ancestors. So in Trinidad, we use uh, exposed oil drums to come up with an instrument called the steel pan. Right? This is a steel drum, and we cut it, and we play it with um, a mallet, and we have steel pan, the only acoustical instrument invented in the 20th century. We also use things that are a big barrel. This is a small one to the big barrel, right? It's called a, a doodoo. It's called, and that plays the bass, right? So. There's about different steel pan instruments that combine to form a steel orchestra. We have the guitar pan, we have the double seconds, we have the six bass, we have the cello. And you put those things together and you have a steel orchestra, right? One of the other things that, that, that we did to, to kind of really add to the, the band is we use, you see this is a brick hub, right? We call this an iron. All right, that make rhythm. All right, so we use the iron. Then you people know this. We call it a scratcher. All right, you will see that. Then of course you can't have a rhythm section or a steel band without a cold bell. Right, and then so what happened? So what you're gonna see? Tempo is gonna do a little presentation. We did a little backyard a recording of of, of Tempo International. On the steel pan, you'll see Mariah. Most of us, all of us in the band uh, uh, came from Trinidad. We have uh, people, well, we all originated from the motherland Africa, uh, but, and, and the slave ship stopped in Trinidad. And, and so most of the people you'll see in the performance, you'll see Mariah on the tenor pan, which I just showed you. You'll see Selassie on the doodoo, a large doodoo, which is the bass band. You'll see me on iron. Um, you'll see Ben I on congas, and my brother Joe is on timbales. Um, so the other thing is that we, Tempo is about promoting the culture. So in collaboration with the Cambridge Carnival Committee, uh, Teens Against Gang Violence, uh, which is a youth leadership program, um, and uh, the Cambridge Arts Center, we will be sponsoring and have been sponsoring a, a Cambridge Youth Steel Orchestra. We started three years ago uh, for ages five to 15, and you will learn about the history of Pan. You will learn to play music. You will learn to, to also, um, um, also um, um, uh, uh, play the music as well. So I just wanted to introduce that if you're interested in joining the Steel Orchestra, please call me at 617-365-0637. 617-365-0637. So I think uh, uh, Nomadic is gonna uh, put on the video now. 
of us playing uh, in, in the backyard at my house. Uh, I hope you enjoy the performance. Here it is. <laughs> everyone enjoyed their wonderful time being on the virtual carnival and I would like to end with blessings and gratitude even though we weren't here physically we were all here virtually mentally and spiritually 
enjoying the festivities of music and culture of the Caribbean. And with all that said, blessings and gratitude to the Caribbean people. Blessings and gratitude to the Caribbean music. Blessings and gratitude to Caribbean cooking. Blessings and gratitude to the Caribbean creativity. Blessings and gratitude to the Caribbean culture. Blessings and gratitude to all of you. Peace and love. Hi, thank you. We take those blessings. We embrace those blessings. We appreciate those blessings. Thank you, Sheba. Um, so we're wrapping up. This has been an amazing journey today. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, this afternoon. I did. I certainly did. And I just want to um, acknowledge um, everyone for who's participated today. Again, I'm Nicola Williams. I'm president of the Cambridge Carnival. I've been involved since the beginning. And I'd like to recognize um, you know, a couple people that really started the carnival. Um, if it wasn't for former mayor Kenneth E. Reeves, you wouldn't have a Cambridge Carnival. So um, we appreciate um, and we send blessings to him and, um, and for, for all his love and support. And he's always there uh, for us. I uh, want to thank the city of Cambridge for their support. Um, I'd like to thank our founders um, of Cambridge Carnival, we, uh, Carl Greenaway, um, Cecile Williams, who happens to be my mom, uh, David Martin, Ajir Passos, uh, the late Ajir Passos, Everton Daniel, uh, Lynette Lavosax, which who you heard earlier, um, the late Orville Wright, and uh, and myself. And I want to acknowledge our board, myself as president, Natalie Sirion as treasurer, Drusilla Edwards as clerk, Owen Howell as our board member, and our wonderful carnival committee who are, who's working year round. I, I know that we have a, a credit at the end, but I, I think it's important that I, I, I personally acknowledge um, the committee. Um, we have Drusilla Edwards, um, Ellis Mendez, Everton Daniel, Gregory O'Bannon, Kathy King, Natalie Sirian, Maxine Samuels, Owen Howell, Rocky Genty, Wayne Robinson, Kathy King, uh, Gregory O'Bannon. And um, and Lynette Laveau has been helping us in the background. So virtual hugs to her and everyone. Um, our staff um, who is helping to put this together, a uh, huge thanks and shout out to Nomadic um, and Jenny, um, our intern this year. So we really appreciate their help. Um, want to give special thanks to our uh, police commissioner of Cambridge, um, police commissioner Branville G. Bard, um, who has really been helping us um, behind the scenes, and we appreciate and value value him. And um, we appreciate um, Mayor Sambo Siddiqui, uh, all our city councilors who joined us today, E. Denise Simmons, um, Councilor Quinton Zondervan, and all the other counselors who are here in spirit um, for, for us. And um, we appreciate the generous support and collaboration for the city of Cambridge. So want to acknowledge um, our videographers um, uh, who provided a video content, Videosphere, Wayne Robinson, our photographers, Thomas Morris, Leo James, and um, the rest um, you'll, you'll see on our screen. But every for all our performances here today, we are so grateful. Um, so if you missed um, knowing who they were at the credits, you'll be able to see everybody. Um, and, and we appreciate them and value them. So, and just reach out to us if you need to connect with uh, any one of these wonderful, fabulous, um, am amazing, uh, phenomenal artists. And just to send you off today, um, we're gonna have some music to jam through, but before that, wanted to um, really wish you a, a safe, um, stay healthy. Um, it's going to take a village to get through this and you're part of this important village. And we want you to stay healthy. We want you to um, stay with us. We want you to be safe, love one another, care for one another, um, and vote. More importantly, vote like your life depends upon it. And don't forget, 
to wear your mask. Bye bye. Thank you, Nicola. I got my mask too. <laughs> so we're going to jam. Jenny, are we jamming? <laughs> if you could play the, the rest of that lovely clip from Tempo International, the upbeat second half. We're ready to move. <laughs> I will be glad to. I was trying to pull it up, but I couldn't grab it in time. Next year we'll be in person. Yay. Yay. Great. Thank Bye. you, everybody. Bye, guys. Good night. Thanks, Nomadic. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.